Alrighty, One Needlesville, back in the spot, friends. Today we are going to make feathers. And if you have seen episode 13, I go through the feather making process. But I've made a lot of feathers since then. And I've had some improvements, made some improvements to my techniques. And uh, I wanted to share that with you guys. So right here I have a piece of, I believe this is probably about 24 gauge. I'm going to be using half round wire, 16 gauge, half round wire. Uh, item number 100416, indicating 16 gauge. And uh, this is the feather that we're going to make. And I'm going to do everything as quick and as quick as possible and get right to the point so that you guys can move on with your lives but still have the techniques, the new techniques that I've developed in making freedom feathers. So let's get our wire together and get ready to roll. Okay, we are here with the half round 16 gauge. And uh, what I've been doing lately has been working pretty good for me is I determine about how much down of the feather I want for this to go to. Now, if you remember from episode 13, we don't take our stems all the way to the very tip of the feather because that's not how feathers, uh, actual feathers look. I like to put them about, about that much. So I measure that. And on this one, we are at 25 millimeters. So what I do is I'll... 25 millimeters for one side, 25 millimeters for the other side equals 50. And then I add 15 millimeters for the hoop. And now we're going to go 50 plus 15 equals 65. So let's go 65 millimeters. I use my flesh cutters right here, right at 65 millimeters. And then on this flat bottom part right here, I'm going to uh, tin some solder right here. And then tin some solder right here. Okay, we are here at the soldering block. And what I like to do is just make sure that this is gonna lay flat. So I just bend it kind of in a way that it'll lay flat with the belly up. I put a little flux, wamp, wamp. Learned that from Chad Parker, having my flux in the spray bottle. I have the dripper or the, the dopper, dropper, and the spray bottle for different purposes. Okay, so I put a little bit right there. And then I will put another piece further up the stem because I want for it to boom, boom. I know you guys are like, wow, dude, look at your, you're a, like a surgeon cutting for the very first time, like a surgeon, organ transplants. On my mind, like a certain... Did you like Word Al Yankovic? Oh, man. The best concert I ever went to, actually, was a Word Al Yankovic concert. Okay, friends. Just so you see what I'm doing here. Uh, this is cooled. Now, what I do is I just basically give it a little... I put my finger, eyeball it in the middle. And then I kind of just bend these till they touch right here in this end. And then I squeeze. Oops. Once they touch, then I squeeze down. And I just kind of feed that squeeze all the way towards the hoop, which is, once I get these connected, I look at it closely and I put this on my file and I just give it a roundy at the, at the very tips of the stems. So this is roundy instead of jagged and just looking artificial. And then at this point, friends, we're going to go ahead and take it to the block. And uh, I'm going to put a little flux on this side little flex on that side and then I uh, just put this in the middle just like that that's about how much of the of, of the tip of the that I like that's about 15 millimeters maybe just. and then I just get my third hand right here friends and then right pretty much towards the middle ish I like to have a little if anything towards the tip ish more than anything because right, what's important, guys, is that you have where this, where the feather meets the stem at the very edge here. You want for that to be uh, connected. So just give a little pinch. You'll see the solder run. Boom, boom. Okay, and the top it pretty much did. Give it a little pinch. There we go. And then towards the tip, it wanted. Bam. So then we have that. So we have it right down the middle, pretty good on both sides. 
At this point, friends, uh, we do some texturing. So we're just gonna go right into the texturing aspect of it and I'll show you how I, how I do that. If I have thicker feathers or bigger feathers, I'll use these bigger ones. But if I have smaller feathers, then I use my smaller ones. But what I like to do is just, I just like to start at the very, very tip. And it's important to, to take a quick look underneath, just to make sure that you're not biting into the stem. In episode 13, I bit into the stem several times on one of my feathers and it was a drag. So I go right here and then I squeeze and then I just look and I'll take a look under just to make sure that I'm good and I am. You don't have to be right up next to the stem, friends, for it to look good. Then I just work my way down. Okay, let's look at half of that feather so far. And then I go right to the very tip again and then I just really look close right next to where my initial first one was and just get that same kind of angle and then just work my way the other way around. Okay, so we have a nice texture on both sides. Now what I like to do is I like to get my saw and you can stop texturing right here if you like pristine feathers. I like tattered feathers. I get my saw and I give it a couple little tattered elements to it. So I'll find one of the lines and I'll saw down. So that's one element of what you can do to make that kind of bite. And then there's this other kind of bite I'll do on this side so you guys for your example to see. Uh, I do a, an angle down and then I'll give it a 90 degree. So it's, it's, it's a triangle bite out of it. So this is another example so you can do the the square bite or the triangle bite now that triangle bite looks a little silly right there but every feather is a little different in each feather i'll do maybe two or three little bites out so once you have this going uh, i like to grab my file and then i'll just round all the edges Especially towards the tip, if you round the tip of the edge right here, or just smooth it out, it really makes the feather look real. No sharp edges. Soften that up with the file. And then I like to go along the where the bites are, and then just give it a little random little... Like that, you'll see. And go with the lines. If the lines are angled like this, make your swoops with the lines. It just makes it look so much more um, real. So that's what that will look like, guys. If you guys can see that, I'm going to do the other side, and then I'll bring you guys back. All right, friends, so this is where we're at, guys. That looks pretty pretty feathery, if you ask me. Um, they all looked a little. They all look a little different. Now we're gonna do uh, my improved techniques that I've learned with wrapping the wire. We're gonna put the wire into the hoop. You see the hoop right here. We put the wire into the hoop, and I bring it out probably about a millimeter where I can grip it with my fingernail and press down against the base of the feather. It's important that that's why it's important to have this uh, the base of the feather soldered down so it doesn't get wonky right in there so right here then i use my needle nose pliers and then i will press to kind of lock that wire in right there i'll press it on the wire and then i'll press above the wire to really kind of tie that wire in and also narrow this eye hoop for wrapping because you want your uh oops you want your copper to wrap tight. So then once that's there, it's out about a millimeter. And then I just basically wiggle it back until it's flush. Pretty flush right there. And then I just give it a twist. And then I twist it so it doesn't double on itself. It's above it. The next twist goes right above it. And then I just roll it like this. And however big you want that hoop to be, um, 
will determine if you want 15 millimeters or if you want 17 or 20 millimeters, depending how big. So right here, guys, what I'll do is I'll go out about three millimeters, longer than shorter, and then I get this, piece, this last piece of hoop, this loop, and then I put it inside the eye, friends, um, right inside that eye if I can, and I can, kind of feed it through. So it goes into the eye. See, you can see it looking through right there. And then I'll take it right here and I'll just wedge from the top and the bottom and I'll squeeze it down just like that. Now it's in there. And that was about three millimeters and it's pretty flush. So right here on the bottom, sometimes what I like to do is where this fed into the, at the very um, top of the feather is I'll squeeze in there as well. I'll squeeze right there as well, just to tighten that up and just give it a little. I've gotten pretty good at it, and it just takes practice, friends. But if you can see that, that doesn't require any solder. It's good. Now you have a loop there. I can put, um, make an earring out of it, or I could put a ring there and then have have it for a pendant, or whatever you guys want to do. Um, at this point too, also I like to maybe give it a little bit of a bend, a twist in a bend. It kind of makes it look like a real feather, guys. Look at that, doesn't that? More or less, whatever you guys are into, whatever your preference is. So that right there is the Noon Improved, uh, how to make feathers and you can twist them and make them straight, whatever makes you feel happy. So guys, please go out there and make some feathers and keep practicing. The more you do it, the better you'll get. If this had any value to you, please uh, smash the beans out of that like button for me. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Um, come back for more video tutorials, adventures, quick tips. I'm Benny. I'm out, out here making my dreams come true, and I hope you guys are too. It's July 4th here in beautiful western Colorado. And uh, I'm out here going to go have some hot dogs at my poor friend's house. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm out. Peace.